All right, back in 2018, a Trump administration official wrote an anonymous New York Times opinion piece identifying himself at the time as part of a resistance inside the administration. The author of the piece turned out to be Miles Taylor, who served as the Department of Homeland Security Chief of Staff in the Trump White House. Miles would go on to issue a stark warning in his book, Blowback, about Trump's threat to democracy and his thirst for revenge. And today, the book is out in paperback with an update ahead of the 2024 election. And Miles Taylor joins us now. Miles, it's good to see you. So the original book that came out last summer, Blowback, was kind of a look back at your experience and your time there, what you saw. The paperback looks ahead a bit, looks over the horizon to what a second Trump administration might look like based on what you know about Trump, based on what you know about the people you worked with and who are still around him. So what do you see coming if he is reelected? Well, and even more directly than that, uh, Willie, like the, the subtitle was a warning to save democracy from the next Trump. We had to change the subtitle because we've incredibly made the civic mistake of putting him in the driver's seat for the Republican Party and for the nomination. So now it's a warning to save democracy from Trump's revenge, because the concern here for me is that if he wins a second term, that is the watchword of a second term. And that would sound like a really political thing coming out of anyone's mouth. But it came out of Donald Trump's mouth. He's made clear that retribution will be the theme of a second term. Now, if there was one point, Willie, I would want to convey to your average American voter it would be to expect a very different type of government under Donald Trump. Now, in the first term, as everyone knows, we talked him out of a lot of ridiculous things, often things that were immoral, even more frequently things that were illegal or unconstitutional. Trump was looking towards reelection and avoided many of those very damaging actions. In the second term, he won't be talked out of it. So what do I mean by a different type of government? I want you to imagine for a second, Willie, if you called 911, and instead of them saying, what's your emergency, they said, Willie, did you vote Democrat or did you vote Republican? That's what Trump wanted to do on a red state by blue state basis. If there was a, a tornado or a hurricane or a terrorist attack, Trump wanted to withhold aid from blue states to get leverage and give aid to red states to reward them for fealty. That happened in meetings with him in the Oval Office. He wanted to withhold from people who didn't support him. That's not how government's supposed to work. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you don't want your government to operate. And by way. the way, he was impeached for that, exactly what you're talking about on an international scale. So what you're alluding to here is there won't be people like you in there next time around. There won't be people like General Kelly or General Mattis. You can go down the list of honorable people who served in the Trump administration and did their best at least to sort of contain his worst impulses. Those people aren't going to be there in the in a second administration. Um, I don't say this flippantly. You're going to have QAnon supporters and people like that making very important decisions about the future of the country. So as you look at the people who were around him yep. and now who might be around him, how different is that group? Well, and I don't want to self-aggrandize, Willie, because there were no heroes inside the Trump administration. There were only survivors. And in a second term, it's not going to be heroes. It's not going to be survivors. It's going to be supplicants. And that's by design. Donald Trump realized very late in his first term that he had far too many people who went to bed and grew a conscience every night and came back in with the little inklings of a conscience to say no and push back. He doesn't want those people around. His preference is for that Oval Office to be an echo chamber. That's what he wants, and it's what he'll get. And very few people realize he's found ways to make that happen. At the end of the Trump administration, the person that was your Secretary of Homeland Security, my former colleague, Chad Wolf, was in the job for a year and a half. A federal judge later concluded he was in that post illegally. He should have been confirmed by the United States Senate. You know what the consequences were? There weren't consequences. They learned a very valuable lesson there, which is Trump can put whoever the hell he wants into these jobs. Just do it. Yeah. So, so let, let's talk about those of you on the outside, those that have broken from the Trump ranks. And there's, there's, it's a long list of, of cabinet members, even his former vice president, Mike Pence, has said he won't support him going around. Yet, Trump still commands so much power in the Republican Party. He is the presumptive nominee. Is there, is there a tipping point of, of, of those who used to work for him, who know him best? The warnings you deliver, they should resonate, but they're not, at least not yet with enough people. What do you think? Uh, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, you know, I was joking with you guys during the break. I don't even want to be here. 
I, I don't want to be on this set talking about another Trump book. We're so sick of Trump books. We're so sick of having this conversation. I would much rather be talking about technology policy on CNBC. No offense, MSNBC, but that's what I do is, is, is I do tech and national security. I don't want to be talking about this, but we have to talk about this. And people like me and others from the administration need to come forward and tell the stories as they saw them from the first term to warn Americans about a second term. Now, John, to your question, will a tipping point happen? Look, that's going to require people to stiffen their spines and come together. There are conversations right now behind the scenes about trying to get as many ex-Trump administration officials as humanly possible to band together in one group. It's frustrating because there's a lot of folks who don't want to do it or they've got a business that they're worried about. Right. They don't want to come forward. So hopefully that changes. Hopefully you can see that cohort because in 2020 what we learned is it works. When Trump administration officials got together, what Jake Tapper called the largest group of ex-administration officials in American history to turn against a president, it had an impact. It showed disaffected Republicans that it was okay to break from the tribe just this once and vote for a Democrat. And we saw that in the crosstabs of the polls that showed a lot of Republicans in swing states for the first time in their lives voted for a Democratic president. In other words, they put country over party. And you're living proof there is life on the other side of that decision as well. Jen Palmieri is here with a question for you. Jen? Uh, thanks, Willie. Hi, Miles. So I worked in two White Houses, and I know that when it looks like, when it looks from the outside as if it, it's chaotic on the inside, it's actually usually far more chaotic than it even appears um, from the um, outside observer. And there are a lot of people like you that served in the Trump administration that maybe went in with some concerns about him but thought, I could probably do some good if I'm there. I could, you know, be kind of a guardrail. Um, so you, you probably went in with some doubts, but then what you found, somehow what you found was actually far worse than what you expected to see, even when you didn't had some concerns about what you would see. What, what was it? Was it just more extreme version that, of him than you expected, or was there something even more nefarious that we should be aware of going on? Well, look, I mean, I'll, I'll say anyone who went into the Trump administration and didn't know what to expect is either selling you something or lying. And, I, you know, I went into that administration knowing at a minimum it would be a pride swallowing siege every single day. But at a maximum, it would probably be a career ender and, and certainly would mean that the plans that I had within the Republican Party and the national security community would be wrecked in some way, shape or form. And mentors of mine warned me of that. John Kelly, who was my first boss in the administration, was very clear coming in. He said, don't worry. It is not as bad as it looks. It is so much worse. And so it was clear from day one it was going to be reckless. Now, to the question, what did I saw that surprised me even more? Look, I saw a man who in moments of decision and consequence whether it was in the White House Situation Room talking about U.S. troop movements or on Air Force One talking about whether we were going to pursue an international agreement or not, made decisions on the basis of personal self-interest, but also made decisions very recklessly that put lives in danger. I did not expect, as a lifelong conservative, to go work for a Republican president who didn't want to stand behind law enforcement officers, openly attacked law enforcement officers, openly blasted the free and open press, you know, abrogated free trade agreements, backed away from our allies in NATO. This was a guy who, in my eyes, was not a conservative and, in fact, was behaving in the least conservative way possible. And again, if you think that first term was bad, my message would be, you ain't seen nothing yet because he didn't get to do what he wanted in that first term. If we give him a second, he will. And I'll add one, one final point onto that, which is, to me, this is civic insanity. If insanity, by definition, is doing the same thing and expecting a different result, that is what we are up against right now as a country. If we think we're gonna get a different result and a more benevolent Trump, we're fooling ourselves. And yet a lot of people who know exactly what you're saying to be true are going along for the ride again this time. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.